this is the inside of the cones. Uh, before we, we, we step into the tutorial, how exactly to make it, what material, what could be the cost and, and every single step, I would like to play a few slides. And the first one is about uh, Bashar talking about the cones in a session which most of people are familiar with, but maybe some of the people are not familiar. This session, it's called the Wizard Hat. And he described the cones there as well as in many different sessions, but it's one of the most interesting uh, way he described the cones. So he described the cones like mm, a cubes of Fibonacci ratio. The first cube is being 13 units uh, each side, the second cube eight units, and then five, and then three, and two, and one, and one. And those cubes, uh, the diagonals, they are connected into an apex. And this apex is uh, 33.9 degree, which is uh, creating Fibonacci expansion or Fibonacci ratio. And Bashar also in other session, he talked about another two cones. And one of them is um, the proportion of, again, a golden proportion, like the Great Pyramid in Giza uh, with 78 degree apex, which means that uh, the base and the height ratio uh, is taking into account. The base is 1.618 times a bigger and then the, the height. Um, and another one, which is 19.5 degree cone with apex, which is very interesting as well. Uh, it can be very easily constructed from a perfect square. When you point the, um, when you point the, um, the transporter on the middle of the uh, square and you draw arc, which touch the bottom, of the square, you will have then this arc and the arc, it will intersect the square of both sides. And in those intersection points are actually the diagonals which connect to the apex. And this is the two dimensional shape of that cone, which it will be a resemble like a perfect tetra tetrahedron equilateral uh, triangle, sorry, and a perfect square. So the, those two, those three apexes, 19.5 degree and 33.9 degree and 70 eight degree can be used as a etheric antennas to step down uh, etheric energy or spirit as he called it and down to a physical materiality or uh, our dimension so let's let's listen bashar what he will uh, have to say and we continue then so this represents the underlying template if you will upon which physical reality grows in a certain way it is the blueprint, so to speak, to let you know how physical reality has the ability to expand. This diagram represents a tool that takes advantage of these mathematical and energy vibrational relationships in a very powerful way. It is like, in a sense, an antenna. If you will look at the diagonal lines as if they were a cone. Now, what is the first thing that this might represent to many of you? If you will observe the idea of this particular shape, you will see that it is constructed by the utilization of the creation of forms that represent the first seven levels of the Fibonacci sequence that go from 1 to 13. The sequence being constructed by simply adding the previous two numbers to get the next one. So you see that when you have the 3, you add it to the 2 to get the 5, you add the 5 to the 3 to get the 8, and so on, until you arrive at 13 for the first 7 levels, so that it corresponds to the idea of the 7 chakra systems in physiological reality. From the spirit to the physical, in this way, this cone, structured with these proportions, by creating a baseline which would be 13 units wide, below the 8, and drawing the diagonal from the end points of that line that is 13 units wide up until they just touch the corner points of the unit that is one unit wide and thus allow them to continue to form a point. This is how this is constructed. When you do this, you get a conical form. If you will see this in what you call three dimensions, a conical form that is specifically, specifically designed to do a particular thing, and that is to act as an antenna to translate etheric, non-physical, electromagnetic, energetic reality or spirit into physical manifestation. 
That's what this form is for, to bring, in a sense, euphemistically, symbolically, heaven down to earth. You will recognize that this is the precise ratio and proportion of what you have now relegated in your memory to the idea of the wizard's hat, the witch's hat, the sorcerer's hat. That conical hat is a remnant memory of this idea, of this device. For it was then thought that by wearing it on the head, you would draw like an antenna the etheric energy and bring it into magical, transformational, transmutational manifestation through the body and out in magical ways. The idea to also understand is that there are other references that still exist in your reality that are remnant memories of this particular form. If you will build, actually physically construct this form in a variety of ways, a variety of sizes, a variety of materials, and place it in a variety of locations on your planet, you will find that it will actually create many different kinds of effects. Experiment with this. It is time for this tool to exist in your reality again and to be understood for what it is. So it makes a little bit of sense. There are uh, seven squares here, seven chakras that Bashar explained. Um, it's really interesting. But there is something else before we start the tutorial I would like to share with you. And this is the, um, this is the idea of the space torus, which they're talking about in the book Alchemical Manual. Um, they describe the space torus like um, everything that the moving force of everything, uh, even uh, a signal or a mechanical motion, everything gets moved from the space a torus. Um, and right now, you, I will stop the screen just to share with you um, because I bought some stuff in order to visualize it. Um, one second. So now, now, now you can see me, right? Now, now you yes. can see me full screen, right? So, yeah. so. They, they explain in this book about the space torus and that, um, let me figure it out how, how exactly to make it uh, like this and like that. So they explain in the book that when something is moving, no matter what is it, it's usually a, a sub -ki some kind of substance, which they, they call it a time predominant substance. Time predominant because they describe the time field like a bonding force like a force that is pulling in, it's storing, it's contracting, it's create point of accretion, it's materializing in that way. So when something is moving, it's a time field in motion, and this creates a vector line, a current in a sense, uh, in a particular direction, vector force. And when this vector force intersects, uh, they explain that we live in a corpuscular field, um, when these vector lines, when, when these forces intersect this corpuscular field, space-time field, they call it, then if, if the vector is moving from me towards you, then there are circuit loops that swirl in this direction. You can, can you see the arrows that they're moving like that? So they, they work, yep. yeah, they, they work, they, they, if, if the current is moving from me towards you, uh, this create a swirling uh, loops around like this in this way. And this is a time field in motion, okay? But those loops, because when you enclose field in a loop, you create vortex. And when you have vortex, at the center of the vortex, you have the lower speed. You have a, the eye of a needle or the eye of the storm where the speed is very low. There is no radial force and thus then the current can flow very easily because there is no resistance. And current, it will always flow in a vortex through the center. It will create a central axis, or in this case, because they both moving that way, uh, this current, it will follow the right hand rule. In other words, if I point my fingers on this loop, uh, the fingers rotate this way, so the current will exit from the top and it will enter in this, in the other loop, because this loop is going in this direction. So the current, it will exit from here, enter from here, and thus then exit from here and enter from here, and it will create this kind of pattern, okay? This kind of, this kind of pattern. So 
imagine that the, the vector force is moving towards you. Those uh, loops are rotating in this way, okay? And because of that, this loop is rotating that way. So this creates the most basic dynamic of what they call the space torus, all right? And there is something important to say about the space and time fields. The time field, they say that it's moving like a line or it's pulling force, it's pulling like a line, but the space field is pushing like a wind. It's like a pressure wave. It's like a sound wave, which have a spatial, like a wave front, all right? And the space field always move in the opposite direction. As you can see this arrow, you can imagine that the space field is moving in the opposite direction. So the space field, it will move this way. So this space field, it cre create pressure waves, all right? And those pressure waves are very important because they set up uh, two very important forces. One of them, it's called, um, it's, in, uh, it's called centrifugal force. It's this, uh, loop here this um, when it's rotating like this you can see uh, in in a, in a second on the diagram how this represents but this circulation around the the traveling body creates centrifugal force and it allows the body to maintain the same direction unless an external force is interacting with the body this is like an, an envelope like an insulation around the traveling body which uh, support the same direction in a straight in a straight line. This is in alignment with the Newton's law of motion, with the first law of motion, where he say that if the body is traveling, it will continue the same motion unless other body interact from outside. So this loop is uh, responsive for what we call centrifugal force, and this here, uh, these loops are responsive for what we call momentum, because. This space torus is not traveling together with the traveling body, but instead is created in instances, in a snapshot. Here it's one, here it's a new one, here it's a new one. So it's millions or thousands of billions times per second, new space torus is created. Okay. And that's why they call it space story in plural, when there are many multiple after one of the other, they call it a space story. But because there is a pressure here created, the old space story, they expand behind, they expand behind and they push even further the traveling body. And this is what creates the momentum. The constant expansion behind the object of these pressure waves is propelling the object even further from the initial start. And this is what they say that it creates the momentum. So if you see in the first, um, a torus, it will be a smaller, and the further the object go towards you, um, the oldest tori, they will expand because there is already pressure between them. And this, it will create something like a cone. You know, it will create something like a conical, um, like a conical shape, because the oldest circles, they will, uh, in a sense, be bigger. And this, it will create something like a cone. So we can say that this conical shape, it's actually can be seen like a like acceleration gradient in a sense, if, if that makes sense. Um, and I would like to share the screen because right now, most probably you would be able to see the images and they will make more sense. So here in this image, they, they, they show with the pointed lines, the space field, which is moving in that direction, opposite of the motion. And this is the vortices around the traveling body. If it's coming uh, towards you, you can see that the time field with the black arrow is moving counterclockwise and the space field is moving clockwise in this way. So they give an analogy of these vortices or these loops which are around the traveling body, like a rubber like rubber tubes. If a person enters these rubber tubes, he won't be able to move whatever he wants. They will determine his direction. Only the person outside can change the, the rubber to, uh, tubes and thus then the, the, the one inside can be able to move. So those um, pressure tori, they give analogy like rubber tubes that they 
envelop or protect, in a sense, the object in motion. And this is what created centrifugal force, according to the, the book. Okay. And this is, you can see the oldest tori, uh, which are these ones. They expand behind and they propel additionally uh, the object. This, in this case, is a bullet. Uh, after the initial pressure, which is created within the gun. In the case of a motorboat, the same thing happens. We need to stop the motorboat way before we arrive to the shore because the space story behind that expands, they create additional force, which we call momentum, and we can break into the shore if we don't stop it on time. So if you cut the cone that we're going to construct with you, if you cut it, if you dissect it, uh, you will see that the wire, the copper wire, it will look like this. You know, it will look like this gradient of space story expansion. And if you run a current here, uh, that's then it, it makes a lot of sense that uh, if we run, you know, a current through this copper wire, that those loops that they are moving around, they will propel, they will create an acceleration gradient and in the middle, they will create a current which is moving in that direction, which is the motorboat. Um, I would like just to stop here and to ask if this makes any sense because I'm not sure um, for people who are not familiar with this um, knowledge before. You know, it's it's a little bit tricky if you first encounter this uh, information. So, if this is making any sense for you, so. <laughs> It's making yeah. it's making a little bit of sense, but I'll I'll have to do a lot more research on mm. it. So, but yes, right. very valuable though. Thank you. Yeah, I will send the book if you want. Uh, you can find it online for free. This book or purchase from Amazon. It's very uh, there are two two chapters, but this is explained. And also the other thing that is very interesting in a, is in a fact, uh, chapter five when they're talking about the vortices and the application of the vortices and double vortex. Yeah, I think those uh, those little white circles you were holding up definitely help visualize it a lot more easily than, yeah. you know, these uh, one-dimensional images, you know? Yes, yes. yes. They, they, are, they, they are, they are, um, they are, if you, if you see on my YouTube channel, the previous two workshops that we create, and the last one that is called the Space Torus, I create a 3D visual representation with Blender. So you can see these loop lines and the space torus, how actually it's created. But for me, it, it, it takes a lot of time to wrap my mind and to transfer these two-dimensional images into three-dimensional. I have to read the book maybe 20 times to understand more about uh, this, uh, this idea. But they, they explain that this space story, they are like a pressure wave. We cannot register with our... Um, uh, let's say ears because we listen the sound up to 20 kilohertz and we cannot hear it. We do not have an equipment because they are millions times per second, very, very high frequency, but they are moving everything. They they move all the, all the motion that happens is because of them. Um, so, and, you might, yes. And you might, this might be something you're going to get into, but just like at a high level, what is the goal of constructing this cone in general? I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that as well. I mean, I've heard kind of what Bashar has said about it, but I was curious to know what your, sure, what your yes. goal was, you know? My personal goal, you mean, or, or in oh, general? Yeah, I mean, it could be personal goal or just, you know, the broader, the broader goal for, of it. For me, it was everything started out of curiosity and because I was interested of metaphysics. So I was seeking for some kind of, um, expression that can prove metaphysical ideas or laws or concepts because people believe that they are some fluffy or they, they believe that maybe um, they are surrealistic. But if we can build actually device or prototype that can prove those, those idea, for me, that's the best thing because those ideas that they are behind the cones, behind the space and time fields, they come from universal laws and those laws are laws of equivalency they call it also the law of, the law of love because love see things with equivalent values and positive and negative and that's why it's balancing and accepting both so if we can prove that these prototypes are working we can prove the principles behind which are actually if people investigate deeply this idea they will arrive to uh, to the point that they will see that the law 
the law literally is behind all this. That oneness or, or um, wholeness is behind all this. That a consciousness that care about all parts, it's behind all these ideas. You know, so it's very, very. If people really dig inside these things, they will understand. First of all, they will go intellectually to explore this idea, like a scientist. But eventually, they will arrive like me. To, to, to a point that they, they will see that the heart is behind this. So now I'm exploring the idea also with meditations and uh, energy work. I'm using the body like antenna in order to tune to this high frequency of love and mm -hmm. gratitude, to download them, to, to, to ground them, to translate them into this physical reality, to broaden my perception so I can see and perceive more idea and be able to finish the project as well. So all this relates to physical and metaphysical ideas, yeah. which is the, fi the oh, final thanks. result is to blend, to blend both physics and metaphysics, to, con to converge them both, to blend them both. You see that they're mm -hmm. not separate. Yeah. If you have any, awesome. any other questions or if you if would like, I can also continue with the tutorial, how you can view the cons. Okay. Yeah, it sounds great. Mm -hmm. So this, this is basically most of the materials that you will need um this on top is a wooden stick or um, something that i can use like a transporter uh, i take these nails here and i put one nail from one side and you can make a hole or tape or something and you can stick a pencil or um, anything else that you can draw the arcs while you're constructing the cones because you need to draw a huge arcs and you don't have such a big transporter so you need to make some kind of transporter of maybe wood or maybe iron if anything is going to work so from one side you have to be something sharp to pin it and from the other side you need to be able to put the pencil in a very precision uh, precise way to measure the distance of the arc of the circle uh, this is the torch and the tin in order to solder these iron rings those iron rings are 2.5 uh, millimeter stick. They are usually uh, iron with zinc on top, used for uh, fences, for gardening and stuff like that. You can find it in the hardware store. Uh, here we have, this is a reinforcement for the cones. This is a fiberglass. Uh, for each cone, if you create two cones, you need a um, half square meter of a fiberglass, okay, for each cone. But eventually you can do only one cone and you will see why. You, you don't maybe need to construct two because you can reuse the mold for the second one, for the second construction. Uh, this is um, some rollers that I didn't actually use at all. A scissor to cut the paper. These dolls are brushes for the epoxy resin to, um, to spread it out. This is a glue to glue the paper. And this is a tape, which is a paper tape. Uh, in order to uh, help uh, connecting the papers in a more strong way. So what you cannot see here is the copper wire, which in my case, it was one millimeter thickness, about 500 meters, a little bit less. Uh, this is three kilos, it's going to be more than enough for you. You will have left over, but it's better to have more than less. Um, maybe you can find it for 20 bucks or 30 bucks, I don't know, in your area per kilogram. Uh, you cannot see here in this image the aluminum, aluminum tape. You can use 10 centimeters wide, 50 meters or any, any other length also in order to create a sticky surface on the cones when you wind your wire to not be able to unwind. Of course, you can use a tape which is 5 centimeters thickness or other thickness. Um, uh, not, not thickness, but how wide is this, the 10 centimeters? But the thicker the foil, because I found that last foil I was using was a little bit thin and then was problem when, when I peel it out. So the thicker this foil is, is better for you. It's usually used for a roofing, for um, a roofing installment and stuff like that. And most of the hardware stores, they have it also. And you cannot see an epoxy resin. I'm using epoxy clear resin or uh, liquid glass. One liter, I think it will be uh, enough for this project, more than enough. Um, and also 500 meters of a plastic cord. Uh, you cannot see here, but I used this cord. It's usually for fishing. 
for official men's. Uh, you can use one millimeter, but I couldn't find, so I used in my um, cones 0 0.9 millimeters thickness. Uh, maybe I would be curious to make the cones, but instead of this plastic cord, to put iron or steel wire, which is for fences also, but have um, insulation. It has a rubber or plastic insulation on top, and the thickness is about 1.5 or 1.4 millimeters. I would like to experiment with this because this it will cre increase the inductance of the cones, and I would like to see the final result, uh, how, it, how it will perform with more inductance. Perhaps with, we will see, we don't know. Um, is, do you have any questions here in this slide before we're moving forward? Um, if you have anything, no. Okay, that's wonderful. So the first thing is that this paper, the red paper, I find out that for me it's working at 220 grams per square meter. This is the thickness of the paper, how thick, how heavy is the paper. And it's working perfectly fine. If it's possible not to be glossy, but rather to be matte, it's better. So once you take this paper, you, I am using two pieces of that paper. Uh, they are 50 centimeters by 70 centimeters. Okay, this is the length of the paper and the width. And I create with this wooden slat that I'm going to use in like transport, transport later on, I just measure it uh, from one side, 10 millimeters margin and I draw with a pencil a line and in this line I'm going to put the blue just I want to be a consistent line so I can put this paper blue on it and when I glue them together with this glue on top of that I put the paper tape in order to reinforce the joint not to be just the paper glue but I put on top a paper tape so it will be much more secure the connection between the two pieces which we join together, okay? So I think this is very straightforward. Um, you can use this diagram if you'd like to create. I'm using diagram right now uh, of 33.4 degree because we have 60 and 36, like a whole numbers here, like integers. Um, you can use a cone calculator and you can make the apex precisely 33.9 degree, but here you will have maybe 36.5 or 36.4, something like this. Everything, I believe, be between 33 and 34 degree is perfect because Bashar sometimes say uh, the cones that like 33 degrees, but later on he expands and give the precise apex 33.9 degree. But, you know, I can give you the cone calculator and if you would like, you can make it 33.9 degree. It's actually the most accurate angle you can build them. Now, if you can see this is the three-dimensional figure and in the two dimension, when we joined the two papers, they were 50 centimeters wide. Uh, so the total length, it will be almost one meter. So it is enough for us to cut this width because this is going to be the two-dimensional shape. So if you join these two papers, 50 centimeters each, uh, and if you glue 10 millimeters uh, for the glue, you will have almost one meter. You have 990 millimeters, and it will be enough for you to cut the shape or the shabon or how to call it, um, the template of the cones. On the top, you will have 70 centimeters, and you need only 62 um 0.64 and maybe maybe a little bit more than that you will see in a while why why a little bit more than that so how how to how to proceed after this you have the the three-dimensional the two-dimensional schematics you have joined the paper already with glue you put the paper on top and you put the nail in the wooden slab here from one side you put the pencil on the other side, you can put it this way, you can put it any other way, it's up to you. And the distance from the nail to the pencil, it has to be 62.64 centimeters if you follow this diagram, if you make exactly this diagram. So this, it will create 
this arc, 62.6, it will create this kind of arc. But you need to create also a second arc, which is half of that, okay? Which is half of that. So you need to move the pencil close to the nail and to a distance which is 31.32 centimeters and create a second arc. The second arc, it will help you to see where is the middle of the cone because later on when you build the entire cone, you have to know where is the midpoint to cut the cone in two halves. You need the top and the bottom of the cone in order to intersect them later on, okay? So this uh, is going to be what you will end up when you make the two arcs. You can make them much bigger. I mean, you can make them much bigger than that. Uh, and, and then you have to determine how to make the diagonals of this two-dimensional shape exactly where you're going to draw the diagonals in order to make the cone, okay? Uh, I cover them here with a um, permanent marker to be more visible. This is very important because after when you coat with resin, when you work with them, maybe this it will wear out. So it's good for you to see um, better. And I, I have videos here right now. I, I will show you some videos that during the process. So before we enter the video, you, can, you have two different ways to determine these points. These points are very important for you. You will have the arc, but you need to determine these points. You can measure from this point here, 46.6 centimeters this way, and 48.6 centimeters this way, and draw lines parallel to each other and perpendicular to this. And you will end up, it will intersect the arcs in a such a way that you will have these points from where you can connect with the central point. Or the other way, it's to measure 23.12 centimeters from the bottom arc on uh, upward and draw a perpendicular line to this central line. And this, again, you will have intersection at these points. But you, you can use both ways in order to make a double check to make sure your cone is actually perfectly constructed. You can use this method okay and you can use also this method okay okay and the other thing you can make sure that uh, your right part okay. and it's this distance from here to the bigger part. Yes. that line which is perpendicular it has to be 23.12 or 23.1 centimeters this distance here okay this distance okay so this line, this line from there to there, it's um, perpendicular to the central line. And this distance is 23.1 uh, centimeter to make sure that the points of intersection here and there are correctly placed. So in other words, when you draw the big arc and if you pull 23.1 centimeters up and draw perpendicular line to the middle, you will intersect the arc in the exact points from which you can connect to the central apex, where was your knee, uh, uh, knee okay? So you will have these diagonals. But also to make sure you did it correct, you can also take from here, from this midpoint and measure 40. 8.6 centimeters and draw a line to the, towards the bottom. And you will see that it will, if it's going to intersect in the same area, in the same dot. If this is happening, so you are in the right path. Okay, this is um, what, what makes you sure that your two-dimensional image actually is correct. Do, do you have something to ask or we can we can go further. If you have any questions on this. I, I'm good. You can keep All going. Right. Good. So you will end up with something like that, um, which is in this video. I'm making the lines. One last thing before you start. I think you can use a uh, marker like this in order to make this line very visible because during the process, uh, maybe the pencil will have uh, 
they wear out, maybe you cannot see it later. And this is very important because you need to cut the cones to split the cone after you wind it all together as a whole, then you need to split it in order to intersect the cones. So this this lines is very good to be with them with marker um, to show you where exactly is the, the last um, loop of light wire and then and then the, the, you can make another one a little bit bigger. You can plug here. So when you wind the last piece of winding, you can have a little bit space to play. So you don't need to wind it exactly until the bottom. And it will be uh, much easier for you to make this uh, setup. Like so this arc, it will show you where it's going to be the last loop. But I'm going to draw another arc a little bit bigger and to cut the cones a little bit bigger in order the last loop to not be on the edge, but to have a little bit margin and to be more easy for me to wind and to play. This is the idea of this second um, bigger arc that I will create later on. So at the end, you will see here, you will have this image. You have extra margin here. Maybe you can use two or three centimeters. It's totally up to you. And from one side, I'm using again 10 millimeters margin because I need some space to glue this side to the other side. When, when I roll the cones, I need to have some space to put the glue and to, to uh, glue both sides together. So let's play this video to see what. Now it's is. basically the end you need to embark with something like this. This is the full. This is your to glue it. This is your margin where the last loop of wire will be. So, and yeah, that's, and this is going to be when you cut it. Okay. So, the place for gluing is from that side. So, you can see it's about one centimeter, uh, 10 millimeters. Okay. So, this is the end, the end result. So one of the cones, the blue part is from the right side and the other um, template is from the left side. This is how I make it. Um, and this video, it's when, when we bend the edge of... Okay, so here we bend the edge where we're going to put the blue before we put the blue. It's from this edge. I'm just bending the edge to be more easy to connect. Um, and then let me see this video. Now you can see that the glue couldn't get the work from inside, so I need to address it with my fingers. In order to begin the gaps. Okay. And this is why we put the paper so this paper can help us to align the edges perfectly. And then we can work with our hands in order to glue um, from inside in order to press so the glue can actually start working. So I swapped the videos here. This video had to be after this, I, I guess. But um, when we bend the edge and we put some glue from the other side of the cone, I'm putting also a uh, paper, uh, paper tape, uh, which will help me to uh, glue the both parts together because only the glue, it's not enough to stick. If it's paper glue, it needs time to, to bond. So from the other side, I'm putting a paper, paper tape, and which will help me to precisely align both sides and when the paper helped me to connect them from inside, I'm going with my finger and I'm working on the glue in order to um, start to work actually. But I think I have it in the video. So let's see. Okay, so we have we bend it here from this side to put the glue, but from the other yes. side, we need to put this paper. It's very important because the glue itself, the glue itself here, it won't be strong enough to hold the cone because it will be tension. Uh, created the cone will start will wants to unit on a row so we need to put an extra tape from this side like that and when you put it together the glue it will stick from that side and the paper will stick from the top 
and then you're gonna have cone like this, okay, which is not concentric as you can see, but we're going to make it with the rings. And for when you finish from inside, you can put an extra tape in order to hold it real slowly. Okay, so when doing the cones, you have a perfectly uh, three dimensional cone, but it won't be concentric yet. Okay, it will go, it will look like that, but don't worry, we will fix that because we have the iron rings here and we're going to put them in a one. So this is like uh, the cone that is going to look like um, when you finish, when you glue it together. And then to make it concentric, we have another video here, short video. Another one thing you do is just to press the cone like that, opposite it, when, before you put the rings. Okay, so it will be more easy to take the concentric form by itself, almost. And then, when you press when you press uh, the concentric rings, it will be much more easy for the cone to maintain this uh, round or concentric shape to maintain this concentric concentricity. Okay, and we have here one more, and maybe I have to put one more just in case. So we will have like an uh, armature for the cone for outside. Because from inside we're going to put, uh, we're going to reinforce it with resin, um, with epoxy resin and with fiberglass. Okay, so it will still look like this. And this ring, I need to make it a little bit smaller and also put it uh, on the bottom. So I believe every one of you can measure the rings. You, uh, in this case, when you have the lower diameter, which is uh, a little bit more than thirty centimeters. So you can start with 30 centimeters ring. And if you multiply 30 centimeters by pi, which is 3.14, you will have the circumference or the length of this ring. And once you have the bigger ring, then you can divide this circumference to 1.618 to the golden ratio and have the next ring. Okay, so you, you divide the next ring on the golden ratio and you will have the next ring and, and so on and so forth until you have all the rings until the, the smaller ring. This is how I create them. So it's very it's very easy to start from the bottom and move to towards the top. And you can use different tools to bend them. Uh, you can use also maybe a CNC machine if you want to cut from wood or plastic. Also, it, it works. It works fine, it's totally up to you, but it's important to have this reinforcement because it will keep the paper concentric and it will keep it in a rigid shape. And when we apply later on the um, epoxy resin with the fiberglass, this is very, very important. Uh, these rings, I solder them with tin because it's iron and zinc. I solder them with tin and wax, but also here, you can you can roll a tape maybe around them and you can connect them that way as well. So you know. and one more thing uh, I'd like to share you can, uh, because if you can solder the rings, this is iron rings, 2.5 millimeters. They are on top with zinc and you can find them in hardware store or shops that they sell things for garden. So you can solder them with tin and wax, but also you can put some uh, paper tape to make sure they don't split because sometimes the bigger one, they have more tension and they can split. So in this way, uh, make them like that. And then we're going to put also the same paper tape and around in order to fix them not more because now they are easy to go up and down. So we're going to fix them uh, in order not to, not to move. Okay, and this is going to be like some somehow the final results that you're looking for. The concentric cones with iron rings reinforced and we're going to put the paper on them to finalize. So in this video I'm putting the paper so not to move up and down. I think this is also very um, straightforward, but let's see. It's better for okay, So finally you will arrive uh, to that point where you're going to put the paper tape and the reason why we put also paper tape is because after we need to remove it very easily without creating damage okay it's not so strong but it's strong enough 
in order to cheat the rings not to fall because we need to turn and to flip the cone upside down and then to put here the reinforcements and the fiberglass and the epoxy resin. Um, and those things should not fall. This is why we put the paper uh, tape. And also it's very easy to remove them with a paper tape. Okay. So this is it, very light, very concentric, but still not strong. This is why we're going to put the um the fiberglass and the epoxy. So it's going to be strong, tiny, but at the same time very light. And we can wind the wire. Uh, let's see. Okay, so once this is done, then you can cut the fiberglass um, in a different shape and just install it around the cone. Uh, it's like a cloth. And when you cover all the cone like this, then you can pour the epoxy resin, uh, which I believe in this case, I were using uh, 80 grams of epoxy resin, or 100, between 80 and 100 uh, milliliters of part A and part B together. Uh, and here in this process, it's very interesting that when you use the epoxy, uh, slowly, slowly with the time, you make sure with the brush, everything is soaked in. And slowly, slowly with the time, the epoxy will start to create accretion in the apex. It will start to drop because it's heavy uh, of the viscosity and it will you will have some kind of epoxy a pool here, which which is very beneficial for, for you, very useful, because it will be like a small plastic on the apex. And later on, you're going to use this as an advantage because you will drill a hole and you will insert uh, something like a wooden stick or acrylic stick or something like this uh, with two holes perpendicular from where your wires are going to start. You will put the wires there and you will start to wind the cones so the wire, it won't be able to unwind. So this is why this accretion of epoxy resin at the apex later on, it will serve you um, at, the, at the best. You know, it's very uh, beneficial. Let's see this video. Here's how the cones look like Fiberglass is only half different from each one. Just a single layer, and we will see how strong they are. And if it's, it's necessary, we can remove the ring because they will be rigid now. And we can add a second level of uh, reinforcement of fiberglass. It's necessary, but maybe it won't be necessary. So for for my case, it it wasn't uh, it was it was not uh, necessary to put the second layer, and this way when you construct the cones, it's very good because um, after that when you wind the wire when you demold the cone, it's very useful this structure because you can push it with your hand, you can literally smash it from one side or the other, and when you pull out the the mold, the mold, it will pop out and it will take the previous shape so you can reuse it uh, once again. If you make this in the 3D printer and if it's rigid from some kind of plastic, you won't be able to bend it. And if the resin, it's entered there and it's glued in a certain locations, then it's going to be almost impossible to demold uh, the, the wire from the cones. But because this is a fiberglass, and it's flexible, but it's also strong. You can press it, you can uh, work with it, you can smash it and take it out and then it will pop out and it will restore the original uh, shape and you can reuse it again. So because of that, you can create only one uh, three-dimensional cone and you can wind it and then you can reuse it again. Maybe it's not necessary to create two. For this prototype, I, I, I create two cones, but I was actually using one of them in order to make sure they're perfectly symmetric, they are exactly the same, like proportions. Um, so next step is very important. I, th I think it's the most critical step um, to make the uh, windings very good. And this is, I couldn't make video here because I, I needed my both hands so you need this aluminum tape to roll it around the cone with the sticky part outward, okay? You roll first one part or one line or one stripe, and then this stripe 
you can peel it from the edge a little bit, again, 10 millimeters, a little bit, and use these 10 millimeters to glue the other stripe with the sticky part outside. This is very important, just to make sure that you don't have gaps, don't have uh, holes or areas, because if you have such holes, the epoxy resin after that, it may go in and can stick to your mold and it will be more difficult to demold. So make sure all the stripes, they are glued to each other and you don't have holes, but because this aluminum stripe will cover all the cone, it will be very difficult to see where you're going to intersect. Where is your midpoint here? I will use, I were using here nails, uh, 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 I was using like something like needles and pinch from inside, um, protrude from inside through the, through the aluminum tape so I can see where is my midpoint. But you can use, of course, different methods. It's not so difficult for you. The most important thing is to have this aluminum tape, roll it all around very tightly, no gaps, so your wire can stick around the cones when you wind it. This is very important. This is the most important step. If you don't make this step, uh, you won't be able to roll the entire cone at once. And if you release the wire for just one second, all the wire, it will unwind and you will end up with something that you have to create from the beginning. But because you're going to use this tape, you, you will be able to just put your hands, to relax your hands, because maybe you press uh, strongly and it's tension. Uh, relax your hands, take your time, take a break, and the wire, it will stay there. This tape is super, super sticky. And it will be very uh, precise, very dense, very arranged close to each other. Okay, this is the most important part, I believe, from the cones. And this, it will um, help you also to peel this aluminum foil from the apex and slowly, slowly to peel it out as you go, as you progress, to peel it out and to make more windings, more loops, more loops. And uh, you, can, you can hold the cone from that side where you have, uh, where the tape is not sticky because you didn't peel it yet. And, and this is very easy process. The more you, you for, go forward, the more you peel it, and this is how you go. So this is very important. And here on this image, you can see I'm using acrylic uh, six millimeter rod. I, I cut the cone a little bit. I drill it with a drill, with a, drill um, a hole, and I insert this acrylic uh, rod with a fast epoxy resin, with five minute epoxy resin. And I had two holes like this horizontal. When I put the wire in one hole and in the other hole, I put the acrylic um, cord or the plastic cord. And then I start to roll them, uh, you know, to make the loops. So they keep the beginning of the, of the loops uh, not to unwind. And the tape, it keeps the end or the last loops to not unwind. This is how you can make it super, super precise. And when you finish, you have to pull them out. You have to press them, pull them out from these holes, and, and uh, you can demold it. Thus, then you can demold it. This is very easy. Do you have any questions so far? I think it's straightforward, but maybe if you have anything to ask. Just uh, one question on the acrylic rod. What is the length of that rod? Is it just uh, enough to give you the, the piece you're showing at the top or to go all the way down? It's it's maybe about two, three centimeters. You will see because when you drill the hole, you will see how much epoxy you had stored on the apex from the bottom. So you will try not to go all the way through. Um, but if you use five minute fast epoxy, two components, uh, that is hardened for five minutes. Even if you go through, it's it's fine. It's you you will need very little a bit of tension here because you're using the aluminum tape. The loops they will stick and just just to begin, just to give you the beginning. You know, I'm using here six millimeter rod because after that I install a grommet because I had in mind that I'm going to insta install a circuit with a central rod, which will protrude through the center. And I have a grommet, which is uh, six millimeters in the center, uh, in order to make an insulation from the central circuit. This is why also it's very useful to give me an idea how much. And then I can uh, you can unwind 
a little bit on the top, put the grommet and wind it again exactly around the grommet. There is a channel in the middle of the grommet, so it's perfectly, it's going to look like this. This is the grommet, it's a hole in the center and channel in the middle, it's for cables. And uh, it serves me to protrude here the central rod, but at the same time to not have friction to be insulated totally from the cones. But then after you complete all these steps, you will end up with cones uh, that have aluminum foil from inside. And this is one of the most tricky part. You need to peel this foil if you wish. I believe it's better because it will create some kind of interference if you leave it there. Um, and to peel it out, sometimes it could be very challenging. This is why it's good the foil to be a little bit thicker. Uh, they have different thickness also. Um, and uh, maybe you can use a blowtorch or something to heat it up a little bit before you, you peel it out. Um, you know, but it's, it's, it's a tricky part, but it's possible. And it's, I make four cones, I peel four cones out. It's totally fine. Even on the apex, uh, it's a bit tricky, but it's working out. You can peel it out, the, the foil. So this foil, not only it will allow the wire to stick and to relax and the process to be very precise, but at the same time, it will prevent the epoxy resin to not stick to the inner cones where, where the paper cones is. If you don't have this uh, aluminum tape, when you cover it on top with epoxy, later on when you coat it with epoxy in order to harden, this epoxy will protrude and it will stick to the cone and you cannot demold it. But because you have the aluminum foil, you can demold very, very easily. Very, unless you don't have a big holes, uh, you can demold it very, very easy. So I, I could not make more videos here now to show you how exactly I roll it, but I think it's very straightforward. I, I mean, you put uh, things and you roll it, it, it's very intuitive, the thing, the process. Oh, hello and welcome everyone. Here we are again in Sh Mount Shasta. Okay. Um, yeah, basically this is um, this is how you you have done it, and later on um, you you need to intersect uh, the the cone in two separate parts, um, half to be with the apex with the sharp, and half uh, to be with the, with the bottom. They need to be almost exact uh, height, the same height. Or the top part it can be slightly smaller in order when you flip the cones to not hit the ground because if it's bigger, it, it will have to carry all the weight, the structure on the apex. So in my case, because I have here these grommets and I unwind two, three loops, this part it's uh, slightly uh, smaller. Let me see. Because if this part is bigger and then the base from the bottom, you, ha you have to carry all the weight on the apex. So this is why it's very, very important. Um, the other thing, uh, which is very important also, maybe you didn't ask me, but I will share with you what, what uh, kind of rotation you wind the cones. In my case, now the last prototype, I wind them both on counterclockwise rotation, both cones. Are, are winded in counterclockwise rotation. In the previous pr prototype, one was clockwise, the others were uh, in the opposite direction. But I had some reasons to believe that um, they need to be winded. You, you can, if you can see this image, when this bullet accelerates towards you, the time field, uh, it's, it's rotating counterclockwise, okay? And the time field is associated with the current, how the current moves. So this is why the cones are rotated counterclockwise. You know, this is this is one of the reasons actually. So um, if you if you have any questions about about the structure about uh, anything else, if you want to ask, I'm really open and here to share. Uh, if if not, maybe you can uh, remember something later on, and you can ask in the comments. Uh, or in the group, I will be available all the time to we answer all the questions. Maybe if you find something in the process challenging, I will be there and I will do my best to answer all the questions. So, 
Well, thank you. Uh, this has been fantastic. Uh, I, I'm sure I will have some questions, and it would be great uh, to to get in touch with you. Maybe at some point we can exchange uh, some messages on Messenger. Um, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we are working uh, with. Um, I'm working with another guy from Canada and one guy from France. He came also to visit me in Cyprus. Uh, and we make something like a small group in WhatsApp. We are using WhatsApp and then we exchange information and knowledge. They have more uh, knowledge than me. One of them is selected from engineer. The other one just finished PhD for signal processing. And it's very interesting to speak. But also at the other hand, I'm working with different group uh, like meditation and like energy work in order to clean my myself, my energy to be more aligned so I can see broader, broader picture. And the last thing I would like to share with you, it's this also, I measured it yesterday, actually, this uh, this antenna, uh, this is what Bashar called the Yayao beacon. Um, so when I, pre when I insert here the input of the spheres, uh, like 10 volts, I, I measure on the tetrahedron about uh, 50 or 60 volts output so this also is kind of amplifier although it's a very small device but it's still amplifying it the voltage uh, for four to six times but at much higher frequency at 9.5 9.6 megahertz it's working the resonance just wanted to share maybe in the future we will we'll share how you can make it also but it needs a little bit different machines then so uh, anything if you want to ask if not we will close the session for now and i will answer all the questions in the group of bashar or on youtube and we can speak with you also uh, if you wish on the whatsapp or messenger as well wonderful wonderful yeah. thanks so much for doing this this is really incredible my pleasure really it's my pleasure it's something that i'm curious something that i resonate the same like you and we, we, together, actually, what I realized that together we are, if we circle around this idea, if we gravitate around this idea, it, we create something like a vortex, uh, we, we can amplify it because every one of us have different input, they ha have different code, different knowledge, and can input uh, different quality and, and to build these uh, devices of free energy. We need to be coherent, we need to be congruent, we, we need to work together because this is what they resemble. They resemble balance of different small parts that they, they work together, they create focal point, they create resonance and amplification. And this is what needs to be done, not from one person, not from two, but from many people together needs to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, sure. yeah, wonderful. So I wish you to have a good night or day, and I really thank you for joining this uh, this Zoom chat. I will see what will be the next uh, one that we can talk about, and yeah, we keep in touch. We will keep in touch. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.